Um, and you've got a lot of plays. I mean, we can't, we could go through all of them. No, let's not go through all no, of them. No, there are a couple I wanted to sort of highlight. Of course, um, one very important play to talk about is Anime's Movement. Uh, how did that come about? That, uh, strangely, I was in a, in Winnipeg, standing around some opening night of some play. Mm -hmm. I don't remember what theater, but I was standing with uh, Monica Marks and Tracy McCorister, two Aboriginal theater artists in Winnipeg. And we were kind of like rolling our eyes at like, why can't, why isn't there a play that we want to see? Like, yeah. it's all great and all of this, but like, where are the stories that we want to see? And mm -hmm. then of course it's like, well, if you don't do it, then who? So we started sort of jamming on what we'd like to see. And Monica, I think Monica said, what about, um, what about Annie Mae? And we all knew about Annie Mae Aquash, who had gone to the States in the 70s during Wounded Knee mm -hmm. um, to, to work with the American Indian Movement, and she ended up dead. But that was a really sort of Indian country story. The mainstream didn't know that. The white stream didn't know that. Mm -hmm didn't know that story. And we were all concerned, like Monica was the artistic director of Red Roots at that time. Tracy's a, an actor primarily. And so would have been right for Annie Mae for the role. And I was writing plays. And and we went, yeah, Annie Mae's story, let's tell Annie Mae's story. So we jammed about what was interesting about her story. Mm -hmm. What would entice a woman to leave her children and go and work for a civil rights movement like she actually left her kids mm -hmm. to go and do this work and she ended up dead so she really really left her kids mm -hmm. and that interested us because we're always struggling with those things like mm -hmm. our where do our where's our commitment right like idle no more is happening do i go out and round dance or do i stay home and finish the thing that i'm working on mm -hmm. right do i stay in the rehearsal hall and direct the show that i'm doing or do i go and join the the revolution you know, how do we divide our time? So anime's stories like that bigger. Um, so I read, uh, we all knew what we knew. This was a really sort of pre-internet days. There was some stuff happening on the interweb, but not not the way it is now. Mm -hmm. Joanna Brand's book, The Life and Death of Anime Aquash. Peter Mathiason's book, In the Spirit of Crazy Horse. And then I pulled a bunch of FBI stuff that had been redacted. Mm -hmm. Someone sent me the autopsy report. Anime's autopsy reports, both of them, the one that the FBI did and then the one that her family had done. Um, and I started to imagine her life from the time she went to the States to the time that she was dead, which was only a couple of years, mm -hmm. and ended up writing a play about her so that her name would continue to exist, so that people would remember her. This mm -hmm. was before anyone was ever charged with her murder. It had been 20 years. We didn't think anyone was ever going to be charged with her murder. Mm -hmm. And so it was a bit of a forensic thing, trying to figure out how she ended up dead, and then, you know, order out of chaos, and then offering that to an audience so that people would remember her name. Mm -hmm. And the last monologue in Anime's movement, it starts with a monologue and it ends with a monologue, and then there's all these scenes between Anime and various men. Mm -hmm. Um and the last monologue, she talks about not, you can you can kill me, um, but you can't kill us all. And then she starts naming names, and she lists all of these women's names. Mm -hmm. And some of them are like her anime sisters and mother, and then some of them are my mother and people I know, teachers. And, and then some of them are like fictional, fictional characters, mm -hmm. um, Thompson's characters, and some of them are actors like uh, Spider Woman Theater, Lisa and Muriel and mm -hmm. Gloria. And, and traditionally when the play is produced, the actress who's playing anime adds a name, her own mm -hmm. name, whatever woman she wants to honor and remember inside the play. And then after the play had been done, we'd produced it. it I'm like, okay, that's good. We're done. I can move on to something else. Mm -hmm. um, they finally started investigating her murder. And I was in a hotel room in Calgary and the phone rang and it was the Globe and Mail saying, so what do you think now that, you know, that they've charged, that they're, you know, they've in, um, indicted someone for Annie Mae's murder. And I was like, 
what? Mm -hmm. Um, Really? So it's that weird thing of like art and life and... And you think your play, I mean, your play must have had some influence. Just I don't know. Do people go to theater? I don't know. Do people hear about it? Or is it just something that's in the air? Or is Mm -hmm. it, like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I worry about the power of, I worry. I worry about the power of theater. It was one of my big learnings in that because the in the second to last scene in anime, just before he kills her, or in the scene that he kills her before she is reanimated, mm-hmm. um, I had written a rape and a murder that he, and we had done it stylized because I don't need to see women brutalized on stage. So it was mm-hmm. very, very dancey, but it was a rape and a murder. And um, I didn't have that evidence because of the body, because of the de- decomposition, because of like all mm-hmm. kinds of things, right? Mm-hmm. But I know in war, women are raped. Mm-hmm. And so I know in my heart that she, that they would have raped her before they killed her to take as much as they could away from her. Mm-hmm. And so I put that in the play. And then when I heard Debbie and uh, Debbie and Maloney, anime's daughter talking about her mother later on i heard her say and debbie had read the script i said we had had conversations i had sent her the script to read uh she was going to come to see the show and then she couldn't Mm -hmm. like she emotionally she couldn't Mm -hmm. and then and then i heard her talking on something about you know the rape and murder of her mother and i thought does she know something i don't know or does she know it the way i know it Mm -hmm. Or did she, or did I do that by putting it in the play? Mm-hmm. And so it just became a real teaching for me about what we say, making it so, mm-hmm. right? That awesome. that it is so powerful. This thing, this thing we do in here, mm-hmm. we can just say things. But we know that we know that putting the words together into the air. We know that by the the way the media works and yeah. information and disinformation and misinformation. Mm-hmm. And something about that also, something about that power draws you to it as well, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. And then, and then you have to check your own heart and your mm-hmm. own sort of moral barometer. Like, am I using my power for good? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Right? To quote Spider-Man with great resp- power comes, comes great, great responsibility. responsibility. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I can't believe I just quoted Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. Um, uh, but I've always been struck by, you know, there's certain artists that just create art just to be beautiful. That's it. Or to be, to not, I mean, there are artists who, I mean, they're part of their discipline is to not be political, to not have a message, to not say anything, to just be art. The, yeah. Great. Lucky them. <laughs> Sherman Alexi, who's mm-hmm. Coeur d'Alene, um, mm-hmm. the writer who wrote, who wrote Smoke Signals and mm-hmm. The Business of Fancy Dancing, and my, one of my favorite books, The Absolutely True Diary of a Part-Time Indian. Mm-hmm. Great book. Mm-hmm. Um, but he has said that Aboriginal artists do not have the luxury of just making art. Right. You just don't. There's mm-hmm. too many. Our stories have been too yeah. subsumed for us to not take every opportunity to to tell them in some way we don't we don't and we have a responsibility to everyone who came before and to everyone who comes after we can't just it would maybe it would be great to just make art Mm -hmm. i mean this is also the thing that they the big stick they used against women's work in theater too right Mm -hmm. it's like if if a woman wrote it it was suddenly an issue play Mm -hmm. it wasn't just even though like Men wrote plays about things as well, like Richard III, you know, or Oleana, or anything, name anything. Yes, but if a woman writes a play, suddenly it's an issue play, and believe me, more artistic directors, yeah, we don't, we don't do issue plays, like, yeah, and it's like, hmm, you mean you don't do women's work, 